Let's be brutally honest right now. That's a big question. I'm looking for someone who doesn't want to go to base camp, but they want to go to the very top. And whether it's here, India, New York. Civilization was born at happy hour. That's what wins. That's what stands out. That's what people are interested in. <laughs> That's what I want to know. The Hospopreneurs Podcast with James Henderson. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hospopreneurs Podcast. James Sherry met his business partners in Guadalajara back in 2005, where they made a pact to no longer live conventional lives or work typical jobs. They partnered with master distiller Marco Sedano and his son Rodrigo and vowed to make extraordinary tequila with Tequila Tromba. After traveling the rugged Jalisco Highlands to build a name for the brand, James took Tromba to the US and was based there for eight years before a global pandemic forced him back to Australia, where he's now based. Folks, so that we can keep running the show, Access Collins has sponsored this episode. Their revolutionary booking and inquiry management software for hospitality is designed to help operators increase foot traffic, maximise revenue and tackle no-shows. And they're doing that. The average user on their platform sees 18% more web bookings, an increase of 25% on inquiry conversion rates, and up to 900 hours saved in admin each year through automation. If that might help you too, check them out at bit.ly slash hospo sponsor. Hello and welcome to the show, Jimmy. James, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm really excited to have you on the program. I first connected with the PR business that works with you guys, and I really wanted to have a chat with you and hear about the work that you've done with Tromba over a number of years now. Absolutely. Yeah, we've been doing it a long time now, so uh, there's plenty of stories to get around. Not all fit for recording, but it's great to talk to you. Well, happy to um, you know hear what it is that you're willing to share on the program with me today. And I guess to move into then the very first question of the show, which is a crazy hospitality story or exceptional hospitality experience. I've had some incredible hospitality experiences worldwide, really, and, and to nail just nail it down to one would be nearly impossible. But the craziest story is probably more business related than hospitality related. It is comes at the very first instance of us launching Tromba in Australia. It's the first Tromba story and I still think it's the craziest. So the first time I ever had a sip of Tromba, I was actually driving down William Street in Sydney with my business partner, Nick Reed. We were in the car on our way to the Sydney bar show. I'm just going to quickly preface this story, Jimmy, with obviously we don't condone drink driving on uh, program. Certainly not. We'd managed to pull over if that makes it any better. Thank you. Yeah, that would be good. The real story is flashback to 48 hours before that. So we'd started making tequila in early 2010. We planned to launch Tromba at the Sydney Bar Show for the Australian market in the September of that year. And we had a freight forwarding company uh, all set to ship our first shipments over from Mexico to Melbourne. And what was supposed to arrive in April, we then started to get quite worried about in July that it still hadn't shown up. And then it was August. And then we realized that the shipment was never arriving because what had actually happened is a mirrored company had started up within our freight forwarding company that were taking money from those clients and not shipping any of the product. So a few people ended up in jail over this in Mexico. And we ended up with no tequila in Australia for the launch of our product. So it's pretty hard to launch a brand with no product. So what ended up actually happening was my business partner, Nick Reed, we got to be three days out from the Sydney Bar Show. We'd organized it with our business partner, Rodrigo, in Guadalajara. So Nick flew out the day before the show, flew over to LA. Rodrigo cobbled together 12 cases of Tromba and flew up to LA from Guadalajara. They met in the airport. Rodrigo gave Nick a few suitcases full of tequila and Nick got back on a plane that night and flew back to Sydney to meet me up. So yeah, he arrived the morning of the uh, Sydney bar show. Nick's wife and my brother were at the actual odd pavilion setting up our stall. And for the first hour of the show, they had people coming past and asking them what they were doing. I said, oh, we're a tequila company. And they're like, oh, cool. We'd like to try some. I was like, oh, we don't have any tequila. That's on its way. So I went and picked up Nick from the airport and we were driving over to start the show. 
And we just looked at each other and said, we should probably try this tequila, right, before we go and start spruiking it to the uh, hospitality community of Australia. Hence our uh, initial sips of Trumbull or in the car on the way to the show. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it was a bit of a baptism of fire for us. We got some cases into the stall and then that was it. We were off and chatting away about the Trump story, about Marco, our master steward, about the terrific tequila we had just managed to get into the country under the wire. Yeah, so you're like, you know, you've got this great brand story and you're sharing that with people and then it's in the same moment that you've tried it for the first time. Like, oh, you know, here's our brand story. And by the way, it's pretty good. Yeah, we've just had some for the first time now. Here it is. I can't tell you how nervous we were when we were having those first initial sips and I can't tell you how excited we were by the end of that first day by pouring out our first bottles of Tromba and having the reactions that we had to the tequila with people just really super excited that we had not just brought this new brand of tequila into Australia but that we had started it ourselves in Mexico with a legend of Marco's caliber. That's what we were doing. That was our dream that we brought to life and the tequila was tasting amazing everyone was having a great time gee what a roller coaster and that was the first day <laughs> james that was a day one of our business it's 11 years tomorrow if you can believe it september 22 2010 from that trade show then jimmy where did you go that then positioned you to get into this position to ultimately expand into the u.s a number of years later The tequila industry in general is very North America centric. So those initial years of Trombo and sort of learning on the job, how best to present our brand, realizing what we really had as far as a brand and a story and a product and where the craft tequila space was sort of going, all roads led to the US at the end of the day. The ultimate goal for Trombo was to give an amazing tequila drinking experience to people who weren't used to having that kind of drinking experience. And that's why we started a brand in Mexico, brought it to Australia. One of my business partners is from Toronto, a similarly undereducated market to Melbourne. And at the very core of why Trombo exists is to give people an amazing tequila drinking experience. And what better place to give people an amazing tequila drinking experience than the US where it's the market that consumes the most tequila in the world. So once we had the confidence in our brand and in our operation in Mexico and that our story resonated with people, it wasn't just about Australians connecting with Australians over tequila. It was about people connecting with tequila. It doesn't matter where it was from, where the people were from that were telling the story. It was about connection between the drinker back to where tequila comes from in Mexico. When we had that level of confidence, it was like, okay, well, why don't we go and pick a fight in the biggest tequila drinking market in the world and see if that story of ours translates to a market where tequila is already super popular. It already is part of the drinking culture. And how we started it here in Australia is put a couple of bottles in your backpack and go around and start talking to people and telling your story and getting people to try it. So it wasn't a huge undertaking in the first instance because we'd done it all before. We just did it this time in the biggest tequila market. And I moved to Chicago in 2014 and that was our initial market. So we're only starting small and then we expanded into Washington, D.C. and then eventually a year or so later launched in New York and then California and then on it goes. So the way those sort of dominoes fell with uh, expanding in different states was we found that how we had started off in Australia was translatable to the US in the way we went about things. It was just about going into bars, going into restaurants, meeting people, telling our story, getting people to try our tequila and painting a picture for them as to where it came from and who the amazing tequila craftsmen were behind the brand and it just evolved from there. And so you've obviously got a great product, but in that development and the expansion in the US market, and as you said, the largest tequila consuming market in the world, what was it about your brand story? You said there were the same elements that you had in Australia to expand. And I'm sure that you know having that experience in Australia and learning along the way and knowing the sorts of answers to the questions that you would need, particularly moving to a more tequila educated market. What were some of those elements in your brand story that you think set you up for success to expand over in the US? I feel that the US market is in many ways sort of overrun by celebrity 
brands. And for better or worse, by the way, like there's some celebrity brands that have been good for the category. Most of them haven't, but <laughs> there have been some brands that tell a fairly compelling story. But there's an authenticity to the Trumba story that I think just isn't matched by those brands that are a bit more about the glitz and glam. It starts with Marco Sedato, our master distiller. He is one of the pioneers of the premium tequila space. He made the initial batches of premium 100% agave tequila under his previous role as the uh, master distiller at, at Don Julio. And where he comes to us in the, in the trauma sense is he's served over 40 years in the tequila industry. And where he comes to Tromba is he's never owned a brand himself. And when we met him in Mexico back in 2005, that's where this story, I guess, emerges. He had worked for a long time, always for someone else. And what he wanted to do with Tromba was to create something that said everything he wanted to say about tequila. And so often the products that come out of Mexico are about a person, a place, and more increasingly about the celebrity face behind those brands. And I guess what Trumbull was trying to do was tell Marco's story, not so much as a person of note, but as a craftsman. And I think that resonated with a lot of people in the US market. It's so attached to the, the craft spirit movement of the time. And to be able to say, look, we, uh, this brand's not about us. It's actually about. Marco and a culmination of his career and also about his relationship with his son, Rodrigo, and how they're, they're creating it together and how Marco is ushering in the next generation of tequileros in, in Mexico. It resonated with the people, particularly in bars and restaurants, who wanted to put something on their back bar that they were proud of, that wanted to put something in their cocktails that really said what they wanted to say about not only the tequila industry, but about themselves and about their own brand and their bar and restaurant that they were operating. There's a lot in your answer there, and, and thank you for fleshing that out. Take us back to that time when you did connect with your other co-founders and then with Marco. What's the story of the inception of the brand? I come to this a, a bit later on. This is actually uh, Nick Reeve, my business partner's story, because he was uh, living in Mexico at the time. How they all know each other. Nick and Eric, my business partner from Toronto, they were at uh, university together in Guadalajara in 2005. They were actually roommates together, learning Spanish and partying in Mexico. They couldn't help but fall in love with the local libations of tequila and they learned a lot about it. And it was when that sort of tequila bug first bit those guys. Rodrigo Sedano, our business partners, they went to the same university. So I think it was after about six months, Eric moved back to Toronto. That's 2005. And here we are in 2021. Despite like a short stint back here in Melbourne, Nick Reed has lived in Mexico pretty much ever since. He never left and it was him that sort of brought us all together with the idea of creating something in Mexico, creating a tequila brand to take back to places like Melbourne and Toronto to teach people what an amazing tequila drinking experience can be and have that university connection with Rodrigo, who better to ask than the guy who'd seen and done it all before, Marco Sedano. So it's really just a story of good timing and good connections in Guadalajara and obviously Nick deciding he would never move back to Australia forever that brought us all together. Before Tromba, your experience was in live TV production as well, so which is a totally different space to be in. And I mean, maybe since there's a connection we can draw with some sort of maybe there's a production angle that you've been able to apply that. But I'm interested to know with a lot more video taking place these days compared to back then when you know you connected with your partners. How have you applied those sorts of skills and what motivated you to move into the spirits game? I went to film school after a couple of failed attempts at going to university, took up the opportunity to do a film and TV degree at Swinburne in Melbourne. And what I've since realized about myself is I'm a storyteller by nature. It's just what I do. That's why this idea of film school really appealed to me. I learned a lot about storytelling craft but also i learned a lot about small business i think in film school by managing productions now, each production's got a budget you got to spend money on certain elements and you got to bring people together to execute the whole thing so there was like that storytelling element to my studies there was the small business element to my studies but then i get out of university i go into the live tv industry which Whilst it was a very interesting experience to see how these larger scale productions run, it wasn't an industry that 
didn't really fit my entrepreneurial part of my personality because it's very much, all right, you do your job, don't do anything else. Stay in your lane. If we need you, we'll call you sort of an industry. So that gave me a, a sense of frustration. And I did this degree and I was building towards a career in this industry. I get into the industry and it's not really what I thought it was. But having been exposed to this storytelling, this creative space is what led me to get involved with Tromba. It was because of what I was doing. And I had a small production company that I ran with my brother as well on the side and we would do small scale commercials and some music videos and things like that. Those creative endeavors, I suppose, that led Mick Reed to call me up one day and say, hey, you know about video production and so much of what brands were about at the time was this idea is, oh, we'll create some videos that'll go viral and that'll, that's how we'll create a big story around our brand. Nick wanted to talk to me about that and bringing the creative aspect to the Tromba brand. It was getting into that brand authorship process where I really discovered something about myself. I really unlocked that storyteller aspect of my personality. I was like, this is an amazing thing I could be doing for work. This is not something that the TV industry, I'd have to work in TV for 20 years before someone gave me an opportunity to tell a story the way I want to tell it. This is what I need. This is, this is how I can best get my personality into my own career. So it was pretty amazing how you go to uni or you get into an industry thinking it's going one way and the skill set you acquire comes through in a completely different industry. So, Jimmy, along the way, and it has been this, this incredible journey to go from even at the very beginning there, you mentioned at the start of the episode about some of the challenges with logistics with another country and not the uh, sorts of challenges that one might expect. I mean, I'm not in that sort of world, but I don't imagine that people are thinking about some sort of fake company getting between things and taking people's cash. Now, you must have learned some amazing things along the way on this journey. What are some of the things that you have learned? And then if we look at that development and then trajectory of your learning, where are you looking now to learn and grow? Yeah, a lot of our business comes down to the people involved. Our ability to collaborate with not just my business partners because we all bring different strengths to our business, but also our customers. The idea of instead of just dropping a product on a customer and go, okay, thanks for buying a case. Now that's your problem. Good luck selling it to whoever your end customer is. Instead of doing that, to collaborate with those people in helping them build their business. Our business is a part of their business at the end of the day when they pick up a bottle of Tromba. So how can we help them tell our story through their own business? I think that's the biggest lesson I've learned along the way is the ability to collaborate with people be it partners, employees, or our end customer is so important. And I think it's something that we've done particularly well because we're a brand that hasn't always had the strongest marketing budget, the big name person behind it. Everything we've done has been on a sort of a street level, a street fighter mentality, if you will. And we've teamed up with people in cities all over the world to tell our story and to help those people running those businesses to tell theirs in a way. With your partners, who has brought that background knowledge of the industry, that sort of ground floor understanding of the venues and then how to sell to those venues as you've developed, given that that's the sort of business development that you've had, the way that you've gone about marketing your brand through that direct channel. And that's the sort of way that you've mentioned that Tromba has grown. Who's brought that and how has that gone about and developing that knowledge and understanding of your customers? The beauty of us getting started is we come with no experience to the table. I mean, my family to a degree is in the hospitality business. My stepbrother and stepfather own restaurants and I had that connection to the industry whilst not being a part of it myself. So I understood how to talk to bar owners and restaurant operators, but also I was able to talk to my stepbrother, Andy, and a lot of his friends and people who work for him and that sort of stuff. And to say, look, we've got this thing that we want to introduce to bars and restaurants. How do you feel we should go about it? So none of us really brought any existing experience to it, but we were 
pretty lethal study when it came to getting started because we had the opportunity to talk to so many industry leaders, both here in Melbourne and Eric would definitely be say the same over in Toronto. So it was really a learning on the job kind of a thing rather than an experience that we brought to the table when we got started. How then have you handled competitors in that space, given that things have changed a lot since you were an early days startup, but how have you handled competitors along the way and on that journey to grow into the brand that you are today? I know it's probably a well-trotted out answer to this, but I don't see having many competitors. I think that what we do in the independent craft tequila space is so much different to other brands that pop up that have that celebrity sort of angle or are a a heritage brand that's owned by a multinational, that sort of thing. It's a funny thing that those brands tend to go through waves because they spend money in marketing. They'll have big sales pushes where they incentivize sales staff and things like that. You see like a massive spike with certain brands, but then they taper off because they stop spending the money. So when it comes to Tromba, it's always just been a slow, slow build from zero to where we are now. We don't see many peaks and troughs with Tromba because we're just trying to move the ball further at one inch at a time sort of thing. So I don't see us in effect having to handle competitors when we've lost business, say, to other tequila brands. We've always handled it in a sense of, oh, there's no point getting upset or throwing our hands up because eventually that'll turn this next phase of whatever brand is spending the money at the time, that'll turn and we'll get that business back at the end of the day because we're still here. We'll still be here. Some of these brands and be it in the tequila space or any particular space, they play the game to win it for the quarter, for the half, one year, two years at a time. We're in it to keep Tromba going, to keep Tromba moving forward. We'll do it for the next 30 years if we have to. There's no end game scenario where we win the tequila industry. So we've seen a lot of brands blow up and fizzle out. And all we want to do for Tromba is to keep it moving and keep telling our story. Thanks for that, Jimmy. You mentioned about the end game. I'd like to know what your end game does really look like for Tromba. There isn't a point where I can get Tromba to and go, okay, that's it. We've done what we set out to do. It's an infinite mindset you have to have, I think, with a brand that there is no end game. The ideal scenario for us is that we create a sustainable business with an amazing group of people either working for us or working with us as distribution partners to give people that high quality tequila drinking experience that we set out to do at the start. Rushing towards a finish line can trip you up sometimes, a lot of the time. So being the best possible version of ourselves is the ultimate goal. And I don't think you ever reach that. I think you'd die trying. On that journey of growth, who are you looking to model your development and the way that the business is moving forward? You mentioned that none of the founders have come from a background like in the trenches, sales, people or ops having this really adjacent. You have an adjacent understanding of the hospitality industry, but still had some incredible, in fact, a lot of incredible success with the brand. Who are you looking to model your growth and development? Well, to give you one example in the spirits industry, so Tito's Vodka is a good one to look at where they created a, what they call handcrafted vodka from a very non-traditional place in Texas in a very non-traditional bit of packaging and their ability to get their story out and through their ability to hustle their brand, they've become part of the drinking culture. Tito's and soda is a thing in the US. I'm not sure how popular it is here in Australia, but it is a brand that hasn't been sold to a a multinational. They're still themselves and they've put their stamp on the drinking culture. So I'd say that instead of us rushing towards selling the brand or reaching a certain amount of cases sold or anything of that nature, it is to make Tromba synonymous quality independent craft tequila in the way that Tito's has done that in the vodka space. Jimmy, I've just got one last question for you on the program today. I'd like to know who you'd like to hear on the show. Well, I mentioned my stepbrother, Andy. He's got a bunch of restaurants here in Melbourne and a serial entrepreneur. He's got an incredible entrepreneurial brain in the sense that he's taken his brand. He's they've done restaurants and a catering company and a bakery and products and distribution and all sorts of things. I think uh, Andy McMahon from Movita would be a 
terrific guest to have on to talk about Tapper's culture in Melbourne, but also everything you can do associated with that. He's a good storyteller too, Andy. So definitely give him a shout. It's fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing, Andy. Thank you for joining me on the program. More importantly, Jimmy, thank you for sharing your story. And it's been a pleasure having you on and and hearing about your growth and development over a number of years and how Tromba has gone from a brand that you didn't really, when you took it to that first trade show, didn't really know much about the product itself, but about the story and how that story has carried you to grow internationally into an exceptional brand. So thank you again for joining me, Jimmy, and I'm very excited to see where the brand moves from here. Thank you, James. Thanks so much for the chat. It was uh, really good fun. This program is hosted by James Henderson. Voiceovers were by Angus Brennan and Shim Phelan. Thanks to our distribution team and a special thanks to you for tuning in every week. This program was produced by H Media. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon.